the idea behind death and life, um, this contrast between the two has been seen throughout the biblical timeline. If you think back to the Garden of Eden um, with Adam and Eve there facing spiritual life and spiritual death for the first time together, up through to the children of Israel being faced with um, the choice of whether or not to serve God, um, being faced with death or, or life, and um, even through up to this guy named Atai in 2 Samuel chapter 15 who, who told King David, listen, no matter where you go, whether it be death or life, I'll be right there with you. And, and even to Jesus Christ, you know, laying down his life and dying for the, for the sake of um, the world being able to live through him. I mean, we've, we've always been faced with this choice to serve God, whether it be through death or through life or through anything in between. The concept of this record has been taking shape for quite a while. Um, the past year or so, my dad got diagnosed with cancer. Um, our pastor's wife uh, recently almost lost her life in her fight with cancer. And so many, so many people in our fellowship uh, passed away recently. And, and there's just been a lot, of, a, a lot of disease, a lot of death, and a lot of sickness. And, um, and, and we've been faced with this, this choice. Do we serve God through it? I remember the night that this concept was really birthed in my heart. Um, a friend of mine called and asked if I would come up to the hospital and lead him and his family in worship while his mother was on her deathbed. And I just remember sitting there um, in this tiny hospital room singing praises to God and, and the family was just singing out to him even in the midst of this tragedy. And, and it, it opened my eyes to see that we are called to sing. We are called to, to praise, to serve God, to commit ourselves to God regardless of what's happening, regardless of whether we're going through death or whether we're in the middle of our lives. I remember sitting there in that hospital room with the family just singing out to God and hearing their voices being lifted up to Him even in the midst of this tragedy. Around this time I began writing songs for my church to, to sing um, throughout this time of death and dying. Songs I wanted to give to them to give right back to God. Um, songs where they could say to God, Lord I, I commit myself to you no matter what the trial, no matter what the circumstance. You know, after writing these songs for my church and after seeing these things take place in my church, I began to notice that the same trials were taking place in the church abroad. So many pastors that we know and love have lost a loved one or a family member or someone close to them recently, and, and I just began to see the need for these songs even more. Everyone faces death, and, and everyone needs a song to sing in the midst of it. Since that time, I've, I've really been able to, to see these songs come to life. I've had the privilege of working through them and rehearsing them with some of my best friends. Uh, guys like Jordan and Nate and Daniel and, and David and the other David. And These guys have a passion for the Lord, they have a passion for music, and, and together we've been able to see these songs breathe and really just come to life. Just like each of these songs have a unified theme, I've noticed that they've grown individually in their own personalities. And, but yet at the same time growing together to form one unified song that we can lift up to the Lord. This summer I get the opportunity to go into a studio and record these songs and you have no idea how excited I am. I will finally be able to put these songs into the hands of my family and friends who I long to see benefited by them. I want these songs to be vehicles that each of us can get into and start in one place and then wind up before the throne of God um, seeking His will, seeking His heart, His kingdom, and committing our lives to Him regardless of our situations. More than anything, my desire for this record is for it to have the breath of God inside of it. Without God having His hand in it, without Him completely directing it and moving in it and through it, it's meaningless.